Builders begin hiking prices. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and I hope you've had a good weekend, ready and prepared for next week. Now, we've been discussing the construction apocalypse, builder after builder going under. Many of them, well, obviously now, trading while insolvent and, well, you know, not really set up to deal with the issues that we're facing, like the inflation, uh, labor supply issues, and, well, they're the big two. Then you've got also weather and lockdowns all thrown into one. Now, here's what's happening. Builders are starting to, well, hike up their prices. I said this would happen. This is the only way that the builders that can survive can... uh, well, protect themselves. We've been living in an environment with pretty much no inflation for as long as we all can remember. Now we're suddenly starting to encounter it. So builders just have to lift the prices. Let's have a look at this article here. Now, the question I put to you, if we're seeing a new build, uh, the pool of builders who can build drop, the pool of tradies who can trade will also decrease because some of them sadly are going to go bust because of all of this. Then those that remain start to hike up their prices What's it going to do for established housing? Let me know your suggestions and what you think might happen in the comments. If anything, I'd say that would increase the support for prices for existing housing. So let's have a look. Home building costs soar as builders hike prices to protect themselves. So the cost of building or renovating a home has soared by nearly a quarter over the past two years and is set to climb further with residential builders inflating project costs to protect themselves as more construction firms go to the wall. In December 2020, an average Victorian housing project cost $245,000, data collated by the Victorian Building Authority using building permits showed. A year later, it had jumped by 28% to $313,000, and a new analysis by the Housing Industry Association has found the cost of building work rose 22%, between May 2019 and May 2022. 22%. I wonder how much of that has been captured in CPI, everyone. Builders are terrified of making a loss, so they build in significant contingencies to make sure they're protected against future cost increases, said Paul Vinney, Victorian President of the Association of Consulting Architects. They are pricing through the roof because of that fear. Can you blame them? Can you blame them at all? You can't really, can you? Maybe maybe we need to move to a cost plus system as an option at least. But here, you know, the residential construction is treated like its own little own little cute little puppy that you need to take care of. It's different to other construction because the onus is very heavily on the professionals and trades to take care and protect the poor vulnerable little residential bill up uh, residential client which isn't true many of them are quite you know, quite sophisticated clients but still that's just how the rules have been set up homeowners and builders typically enter contracts with a price fixed on the day of signing usually a requirement of lenders and designed to protect consumers the contract generally does not allow increases due to the rise and fall of materials and labor costs but in recent months the cost of building materials has gone up or oh, gone in one direction up. One day you're buying a piece of timber for three dollars. Two weeks later it's six, said Mitchum based builder Mark Mengati. It's very hard to be able to actually lock yourself into a fixed cost. After quoting for a commercial job in Fitzroy this week, he told his client he wanted a contract that allowed for cost increases. They refused. His company, MRM Construction, is running running 14 jobs from small house renovations to commercial car parks, lift cutouts, decks, pergolas, and driveways. HIA senior senior economist Nick Ward said the Australian Bureau of Statistics had estimated material costs were up 15% in the year to March 2021, with an escalation of 18% since coronavirus reached Australia in 2020. So then why why are we worried about... (laughs) Well... This is the inflation that we're seeing in construction, guys. And you've got to remember, you've got to remember, everyone's favorite government overheating, well, getting huge amounts of debt, yeah, sure, but also overheating the construction sector. 
juicing the market. You can see here the home builder. It just, it's so you've gotten a fifteen percent increase since last year, eighteen percent since twenty twenty. All that home builder money you got, it, it, it went nowhere. It went. It didn't. It, if anything, it just it, it screwed you. People thought they were getting a deal. It's costing more anyway. A number of Victorian building companies have collapsed in the past week, leaving hundreds of customers in limbo. Langford Jones Homes closed on Tuesday, owing creditors $10 million and 65 homes unfinished. The collapse comes just comes days after another Victorian builder, Snowden Developments, went into voluntary administration, leaving 550 homes unfinished. On Friday, Friday another large private developer, CBD Developments, blamed government rent relief measures and COVID-19 pandemic for the collapse of its six companies. Well, there you go, guys. So he's right. Look at this. Look at this. That's nuts. No wonder builders have just gone bust. No wonder they're just gone bust. You can't. You can't plan for that. I wonder if we would have had this if it, if we didn't have home builder. So, credit reporting. I used to would have had a lot of it because so much is imported, and they've shut down the world economy. They're trying to restart the engine. Credit reporting agency Credit to Watch predicted more bad news to come in the building sector. We've seen insolvency numbers start to creep up, said Chief Executive Patrick Coughlin, though he noted insolvency numbers were still below 2019 levels. There you go. After a COVID-inspired pause, banks and the ATO have started issuing wind-up notices to struggling businesses, something not done since the pandemic hit. Yeah. We're going to start seeing an increase in these insolvencies. It'll creep up. Even going back up to normal, it's going to be noticeable because it's just been it's been crazy. I mean, you could see. Hang on, do I have those? Do I have those numbers here? Where is it? K shaped land referrals. No, I don't think I actually have it here, guys. I have to bring it. I have to find it. Did I have it in this slot? Oh yeah, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, of course. Well got the old charts that you can see it trending down with the companies entering administration. This is when they changed the rules to allow these businesses to run while they were insolvent. Now, anyone, all the tradies watching, all the business people watching, I think should be really terrified at that idea about doing business for someone that's trading while insolvent. Me, an architect, all I lose is my time and you know the cost of you know renting software and things like that. If you're buying and paying for material... And giving that and putting it in projects for someone that's trading while insolvent? Shit. I, I understand why they did it, but, you know, it scares me more than anything. It shows you how they can change the rules as they deem fit. So, many construction firms are having difficulty paying bills on time, a sure sign of trouble ahead. Credit to Watch data shows almost 12% of construction companies are paying bills 60 days late. Coughlin says both small and large builders were now vulnerable. They operate on such thin margins. When something goes wrong, whether it's a big project or a little project, that costs a lot of money. All of a sudden, you have an unprofitable project. One of Victoria's most influential architects, Shane Godson, or Godsell, said the rising cost of residential construction was becoming an acute issue, increasing at such a fast rate that it makes basic building projects intangible for a large proportion of the community. Godsell said an unintended consequence of fixed-price contracts on the current rate of inflation meant builders may include larger margins into the fixed price purely to protect themselves. If a builder is forced to commit to a fixed price with, with an unpredictable market that is inflating by the month, the builder quite logically thinks, well, I'm not going to go broke over this project. Urban designer Angus Fergus said... Finding a builder to take on major renovation work was proving difficult for clients, with one recent job proving particularly difficult. I probably spoke to 15 builders in the area who were like, oh, we normally do renovations, but we're not. We're only doing new builds at the moment, and we're only doing projects over a million dollars. While demand for builders was unprecedented, Fergus said many were quick to blame them when things were wrong. Builders are very financially exposed, he said. He said the demand for builders was so high because domestic construction had been fueled by the Morrison government's 2020 Home Builder Grant and was now also now competing with many other major projects in the state, 
including social housing builds and major transport infrastructure. Jamie Sorman of Foreman of Fuman Architects also chairs Archi Team, a cooperative supporting small practices. Sorman said there should be cons- uh, consideration given to updating the ability of builders to allow for some price rises and falls that exclude any profit margin in order to prevent builder losses while still protecting consumers. He pinpointed a range of market forces that have pushed up construction prices since the pandemic began, among them the federal government's year, the Home Builder Grant. He said the state of the market now meant that considering a major innovation or new build should begin the design and planning process as soon as they could. It's a good time to start taking a project through the early planning stages with the hope that in a year or two it takes to fully design a project and get it through town planning will be in a more settled position. For Builder Mark, um, Mengati, skilled trades and laborers are hard to find. I don't know where everyone's disappeared to. There's a massive shortage of people in Victoria. Well, let's talk about this. I might have a theory, a theory as to why there's a massive shortage of people in Victoria. Weren't many of them getting away from Danistan? You know, Victoria is, we're seeing liquidation, bankruptcy, insolvency, voluntary administration of many, many builders. A lot of the construction apocalypse, the reason I want to map it is because a lot of it seems to be happening in Victoria. And didn't they have the strictest lockdowns and the biggest restrictions? Perhaps that's playing out now. How many of the tradies have fled? A lot of them moved to Queensland. We had a big influx. Can you blame them? Well, there you go, guys. Builders acting completely reasonable. I don't blame them at all for hiking their prices. And it's going to take a few years to settle down. As always, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I talk about here, there are a few ways you can help out. You can financially support us via YouTube or Patreon, use our referral links, buy our merch, or call us if you need an architect. Take care, everyone. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next episode. If you notice the concrete behind me, Rachel helped unload 900 kilos of that today, straight after church. You know, really good wife. <laughs>